Thank you very much for taking time out of your occupied schedule to be with us this afternoon. We would like to start the announcement of financial results for fiscal year ended in March 2014. Let me introduce to you the officers present in this meeting. Akio Toyoda, President. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Nobuyori Kodaira, Executive Vice President. Nice to meet you. The Managing Officer, Takuo Sasaki the Chief Officer for Accounting Group. First of all, our President, Mr. Toyoda, will introduce to you the outline of financial results, and the details will be explained by Executive Vice President Kodaira to follow that. And then we'll open the floor for Q&A. And we are connected with Nagoya office, so some journalists are participating from Nagoya as well. And this uh, press briefing is also webcast, including Q&A session as well. Please keep that in mind. And we have just distributed to you the slide materials. And at the beginning of that, there are some cautionary statements with respect to the forward-looking data or statements. So please go through that and keep that in mind. So without further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Toyoda to the podium to explain to you the overview of financial results. Thank you for waiting, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Toyoda. Thank you very much for taking time out of your occupied schedule uh, to be with us for this press briefing on financial results. For the fiscal year ended March this year, our consolidated operating income was 2 trillion 292.1 billion yen due to increased vehicle sales, mainly in Japan and North America, and to group-wide cost reduction activities. I would like to express our sincere gratitude to all those involved, including our dealers and suppliers, and above all, to all our customers worldwide for choosing our products. We plan an end-of-year dividend of 100 yen per share to be proposed at the annual general shareholders meeting in June, including the interim dividend of 65 yen per share. This will make our annual dividend 165 yen per share. To ensure that shareholders maintain their support over the long term, we intend to continue paying dividends in a stable and sustainable manner. In August, we plan to establish the Toyota Mobility Foundation to address mobility challenges around the world. We will use a portion of our treasury stock to fund the activities of the foundation, and we purchase additional shares to return value to our shareholders. As you might know, Toyota has experienced a number of challenges since June 2009 when I became president. It has been a period of hardship and perseverance for Toyota and for me as president, as we were often not able to do what we had wanted. Nevertheless, it has been a period of tremendous learning. We have learned, among other things, that a sharp decline, even after a period of rapid growth, affects a large number of stakeholders. We have learned that sustainable growth is most important. Toyota grew rapidly in line with increasing vehicle sales, but our human resources development did not keep pace with the expansion, and as a result, our employees and partners were overstretched. Our fall into the red during the global financial crisis and our large-scale recalls were perhaps a result of this. We were like a tree that grew too rapidly that, as a result, was not able to form a strong enough trunk to protect it from the elements. Over the last four years, our profit structure has certainly become stronger as a result of significant effort, which was supported by our stakeholders. In Japan, we will be able to resume paying corporate taxes. We are now entering a new stage 
and are taking the first step toward sustainable growth. I believe that sustainable growth means growing steadily each year under any circumstances. Since our foundation, our growth has been driven by each individual vehicle manufactured and delivered rather than through corporate acquisitions. Toyota is approaching a significant point of change as our global sales now exceed 10 million units. This scale is unprecedented. And so for us to continue to grow, we must remain determined to grow exactly at the same speed as our people. We must never go beyond our ability. Now that we can allocate resources for the future, it is time for us to implement dynamic reforms and forward-looking initiatives proactively. Toward this end, in April last year, we introduced a new organizational structure made up of four nimbler-focused business units. In this new structure, the top management of each business unit is close to their gemba where the action is happening so that decisions can be made speedily and autonomously. This should enable us to address market needs that vary due to size and level of motorization. We have extended this approach even further this year by initiating vehicle development by platform. For instance, Team K is in charge of the entire operation involving development, procurement, and production of the models as the Camry and Avalon, which share our K platform. This new initiative replaces the model-by-model -model optimization approach with a unified team approach to developing ever better cars. Also, as we announced recently, we plan to establish a new headquarters for our North American operations. This initiative to put manufacturing sales and financial operations in North America under one roof is an example of our ongoing optimization of our business structure. For the technologies that will bring us future growth, we plan to accelerate our innovation. Besides refining hybrid technology, our core environmental technology, we will proactively put our resources into the development and commercialization of fuel-efficient gasoline engines, fuel cell vehicles, and safety technologies for our customers' safety and peace of mind. We will also make active investment for advancement of the next generation mobility and IT infrastructure. Now I would like to further discuss growth. As I said earlier, I want to make Toyota into a company which continue to grow, a company which can withstand or even continue to grow in spite of serious crises like the global financial crisis. What then should drive such growth? The obvious answer is ever better cars, attractive products that bring joy to our customers and the people who produce them. These kind of cars can only be produced by the Gemba, where people own their work, think based on facts, and are able to judge, decide, and act on their own initiative. However, the bigger a company is, the more difficult this becomes. Also, what can be done in a crisis may not be possible in other times. Toyota's current situation, as I see it, is particularly critical as we are now entering another expansion phase. This is why I wanted to create a number of focused Toyotas, such as the business units and Team K. Through this, I want to encourage the reestablishment of independently thinking and acting Gemba. With 10 million annual vehicle sales, growth today has a different meaning for Toyota compared to when we had 6 million. Vehicle sales and profits are one measurement of growth. 
But if a number of focused Toyotas have their own measurements and focuses on the improvement of their true competitiveness, Toyota will become even stronger overall. My role in this endeavor is to keep Toyota's overall vision and its direction clear so that these Toyotas ultimately function as one united Toyota. All 330,000 Toyota employees around the world will continue their combined efforts to bring joy, safety, and peace of mind and to contribute to the betterment of communities. I would very much appreciate your continued support. At this juncture, as for the details of the financial results, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Kodai, your Executive Vice President, to describe them. Thank you for your attention. Kodaira of uh, Toyota Motor Corporation, thank you for your attendance today. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to discuss Toyota's financial results for the fiscal year ended March 2014. Our consolidated vehicle sales for the fiscal year increased by 245,000 units year on year to 9,116,000 units. While sales in Asia decreased, sales in areas such as Japan, North America, Europe, and the Middle East grew solidly. This was a result of the launches of attractive new models in each country and region in our effort to deliver better cars and flexible marketing programs executed in collaboration with our dealers. Our consolidated financial performance resulted in net revenues of 25 trillion 691.9 billion yen operating income of 2 trillion 292.1 billion yen pre-tax income of 2 trillion 441 billion yen and net income of 1 trillion 823.1 billion yen the I would like to explain the major factors contributing to the increase of operating income by 971.2 billion yen year on year. Despite the increased expenses, including the cost related to the agreement with the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York that we disclosed in March, operating income increased due to the impact of yen depreciation, cost reduction activities with the suppliers and marketing efforts, such as increased vehicle sales. Compared to our February forecast of 2 trillion 400 billion yen, our actual operating income for the fiscal year was 107.9 billion yen less. This was due to the expenses of about 200 billion yen related to the agreement with the U.S. Attorney's Office and the ending of production in Australia. Our profit improvement activities nevertheless progressed steadily through cost reduction and marketing efforts. I would like to explain operating income for the fiscal year by region. In Japan, sales increase by, increased by 86,000 units to 2,365,000 units. This is due to the improving economic sentiment, a strong demand prior to the consumption tax increase, and the positive customer response to Corolla Hybrid, which was launched in August last year, and there are new models such as Harrier, Nova, and Voxy. Operating income for Japan was 1,510.1 billion yen, up 933.8 billion yen as a result of favorable foreign exchange rates. In addition to our cost reduction and other profit improvement activities, which more than offset the increase in R&D and other expenses. In North America, where new car demand remained solid, sales increased by 60,000 units to 
529,000 units, driven by RAV4, Lexus IS, and Tundra in particular. Operating income excluding the swap valuation gains and losses was 341.5 billion yen, up 152.7 billion yen compared to the previous fiscal year. Increased vehicle sales and cost reduction efforts, among other factors, contributed to the growth of operating income year on year. In Europe, new models such as Corolla and RAV4, as well as hybrid models such as Aris and Yaris, drove the sales increase of 45,000 units to 844,000 units. Operating income was 58.2 billion yen, up 31.7 billion yen year on year, thanks to increased vehicle sales and cost reduction efforts. In Asia, sales were down by 75,000 units year on year, affected by weak sales in Thailand and India, where demand shrank and competition increased despite increased sales in Indonesia, particularly of the new Agia. Operating income in Asia was 395.7 billion yen, up 19.6 billion from the previous fiscal year, secured mainly as a result of cost reduction efforts, which offset the impact of declined sales. In the other regions, vehicle sales increased significantly in the Middle East and Central and South America in particular to reach 1,769,000 units, up 129,000 units compared to the previous fiscal year. Operating income was 42.5 billion yen, down 91.1 billion yen, despite increased vehicle sales due to the negative impact from the change in exchange rates of the local currencies and from the cost related to the ending of production in Australia. Operating income excluding swap valuation gains and losses for the fiscal year for financial services increased by 30.7 billion yen to 316.9 billion yen year on year. This was mainly due to increased lending balance and translation impact of foreign currencies, which more than offset the negative impact from the decreased lending margins. Equity and earnings of affiliated companies for the fiscal year was 318.3 billion yen, up 86.8 billion yen from the previous year. This was mainly thanks to strong earnings maintained by our affiliated companies in Japan and China. For your information, the fiscal year end of our affiliated companies in China is in December. Equity in earnings of these companies for the fiscal year to March 2014, therefore, reflected their earnings from January to December 2013. With regard to the year-end dividend, we plan to propose 100 yen per share at the annual general shareholders meeting next month. The full-year dividend will therefore be 165 yen per share, including the interim dividend of 65 yen per share. This represents an increase by 75 yen per share compared to the previous fiscal year. We regard dividends as our most important means to return value to shareholders. In order to develop a long-term trusted relationship with our shareholders, we plan to pay dividends stably and sustainably in consideration of our annual earnings results, investment plans, and cash reserves, among other factors. As was announced on 26 March, we plan to purchase and cancel our shares subject to the approval of the proposed disposition of our shares to establish Toyota Mobility Foundation for the purpose of social contribution at the annual shareholders meeting next month. We intend to return value to our shareholders through the reduction of the issued and outstanding shares by 30 million shares. And we will continue to flexibly consider share buybacks as an option to increase a shareholder return in the context of long-term capital efficiency. Now, I would like to move on to discuss our outlook for the current fiscal year ending in March 2015. 
With regard to our consolidated vehicle sales for the current fiscal year, we forecast 9.1 million units almost flat year on year. In Japan, we expect a sales decline by 155,000 units from the previous fiscal year because of the impact of the consumption tax increase. We will, however, continue to stimulate demand by introducing attractive new models, especially with superior fuel efficiency and through flexible marketing programs in response to the ongoing market trends. In overseas markets, vehicle sales are expected to exceed the sales of the previous fiscal year despite uncertainty in some emerging markets thanks to the solid outlook of the market in North America. Our foreign exchange rate assumption is 100 yen to the U.S. dollar and 140 yen to the euro. Based on this, our consolidated financial performance for the current fiscal year is net revenues of 25 trillion 700 billion yen, operated income of 2 trillion 300 billion yen, pre-tax income of 2 trillion 390 billion yen, and net income of 1 trillion 780 billion yen. This is a result of the analysis of our operating income forecast in comparison to the previous fiscal year. As President Toyota clarified, the current fiscal year is the year in which Toyota takes the first step forward towards sustainable growth. We plan to make investment to enhance our competitiveness in the areas of advanced and cutting-edge technologies, develop human resources, implement TNGA, and reform operational mechanisms in pursuit of further innovation. With regard to the profit improvement activities for this fiscal year, our current plan is to achieve 40 billion yen. We are determined to maintain and improve a strong earning structure through uncompromising efforts across the group. Our forecasts of capex, depreciation expenses, and R&D expenses are shown on this slide. We intend to invest actively and strategically into capex and R&D, which will contribute to the enhancement of true competitiveness. This concludes my presentation on our financial results for the fiscal year ended March 2014. Thank you very much for your attention. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to entertain questions from you. If you have a question, please wait for the microphone to be brought to you. So please raise your hand so that microphone can be brought to you. And I would like to request that you limit your questions to two questions per person, two questions per person. The person seated at the front row, please. Nakanishi of the Japan Economic Journal. Thank you for the opportunity. First of all, with respect to the fiscal year ended in March 2014, and my question is addressed to President Toyoda. Your assessment of this fiscal year, it's been affected by exchange rate uh, change, but in terms of earning power, do you think you did well or this is represents your true capability? And the second question relates to the forecast for the next year. It seems that both the volume and earnings uh, is expected to be flat. And uh, you talked about the annual growth uh, going forward. Uh, are you saying that you are not expecting uh, to grow very rapidly? Or are you saying that your grower capability or potential has weakened somewhat? Or is it due to the weakening of your capabilities? You always talk about the sustainable growth. I do understand the philosophy behind that. But I, to a certain extent, I have difficulty understanding what is meant by sustainable growth. For example, Volkswagen does have a certain indicators indicating 20 million units per year, among others. So what sort of a company would you like to be or become in terms of this company achieving sustainable growth. All right, uh, let me answer those questions. First of all, with respect to the fiscal year just ended in March this year, my assessment of that, 
Well, first of all, uh, all I would like to deliver is my words of appreciation and gratitude. Customers who has been using Toyota cars and also those people who are supporting us, our dealers and suppliers. To all of those people, I would like to express my deep felt gratitude first and foremost. In addition to that, for the past four years, serious efforts have continued to be made by our employees who went through this uh, very difficult period characterized by hardships. And I would like to rally for them. And uh, what makes me happy above anything else is that since I became president, Toyota has never paid corporate tax, not even once since I became president. A company can contribute to the society by paying tax taxes. And that, I think, is one of the most important missions for a company to continue being the society. So from that perspective, being able to pay corporate tax put us on the starting line as a company in the society. And that makes me very happy. So I would like to express uh, once again my sincere gratitude to all those concerned. In terms of our ability to earn profit or forecast for the future, I would like to respond to these questions consecutively. I personally feel that in terms of our ability to earnings, I think Toyota now has a strong power to earn profit. But what do we make money for? What do we grow for in the future? That may be different when Toyota uh, was selling 6 million and when Toyota uh, sells and produces 10 million or more than that. In terms of our profitability and earnings, once the company has a volume in excess of 10 million, uh, we are doing business with over 10 million customers. The profit is just an outcome of our efforts. And every year, we'll continue to make efforts by coming up with ever better cars, uh, continuing to glow steadily so that we can earn smiles on our customers. And if that results in continued increase in profit, of course, we cannot be happier. But from a longer term perspective, the key to our sustained growth, I believe, with our product, the vehicles, and also human resources. When I look at that from a perspective, the human resource development may not always uh, take place uh, in line with our expectations. And therefore, uh, this uh, fiscal year may be characterized as the um, landing place, the staircase in the staircase, with our determination reflected behind that. But our ultimate objective is to achieve um, sustainable growth. And therefore, this uh, landing place in the staircase might result in another phase of sustainable growth. Four years ago, after sharp uh, growth, uh, we also suffered from a sharp decline, causing difficulties to many uh, stakeholders. And reflecting upon that, uh, we come, came up with the current plan for the next fiscal year. For our sustained growth, we would like to strengthen further our competitiveness. And also, we would be making proactive investments so that uh, we can lay the ground for continued future growth as well. If I may add some additional comments to what Mr. Toyoda has just mentioned with respect to the fiscal year ended in March and how I assess that, as I explained earlier, uh, there are factors that boosted uh, profit, but if one closely looks at that, uh, the expenses related to our agreement with the prosecutor's office in the United States and also expenses related to our termination of our production in Australia were booked for the fiscal year. But notwithstanding those, compared with the fiscal year ended in March 2013, yen was cheaper than the previous year. And also, uh, continued efforts were made for sales and marketing, and also the cost improvements as well. And all those efforts resulted in a profit increase of 970 billion yen. In fiscal year ended in March 2008, marked the highest uh, earnings or highest uh, net income. Compared with that, the uh, yen was uh, cheaper by 10 yen vis-a-vis -vis the dollar and uh, cheaper by 28 yen vis-a-vis -vis the yen. And those difference in exchange rate alone produces 
uh, one trillion in difference. That is to say that causes this year's result to be lower than that in uh, fiscal year ended in March 2008 by one trillion yen. And so 800 billion yen uh, reduction was caused by uh, unfavorable uh, product mix as well. And thanks to the serious efforts made by dealers and suppliers, we were able to achieve this increase in net income, just overcoming those difficulties or negative factors. The, the lady who seated at the front row, please, has the next question. Nanichi of Asahi newspaper. I have two questions addressed to President Toyoda. Earlier, you mentioned that in terms of the corporate constitution, you now have a stronger company compared with the period prior to a financial crisis. And 900 billion yen is due to the exchange rate, a favorable exchange rate movement. And therefore, I think the impact from exchange rate cannot be avoided. But compared with the pre-Lehman or pre-financial crisis period, yen is stronger today. But you said that the corporate constitution is stronger. Now, what has changed in what manner? That's what I would like to be enlightened on. What has changed in your view? Please share your personal view, Mr. Toyoda. Now, second question relates to the sustainable growth. Toward that end, you talked about investments or capex. Uh, thus far, you didn't build new plants, uh, trying to use the existing uh, plants as much as possible, making most of the existing capacities. But you said you are not after increase in volume. And in terms of um, selling individual vehicles one by one strongly, in order to attain sustainable growth, uh, what is your approach or attitude vis-a-vis -vis the building of new plants? Could you share your views with us, please? What has changed compared with the uh, pre-financial crisis period? I became president after the financial crisis, so Lehman shock. And what I have been consistently saying was one word, that is to say, let's build ever better cars. Toyota Motor Company is characterized by very independent-minded different functions. And those different functions competed against each other, and that resulted in overall strength of Toyota as a company. And what was a bit difficult to understand from the outside world, especially because Toyota was a large company, was that what is the ultimate deliverable of the company? And I made it clear that the ultimate deliverable or result was the vehicle that is by the yardstick that is to be judged. judged. In the case of a large company, all those functions are differentiated into different functions. But even if those functions are segmented, Toyota is represented by individual vehicles, individual products. And using vehicle as the ultimate uh, filter to judge the company, our vehicles will be used uh, for the next 20 or 30 years as the ultimate filter, although all the filters cannot be changed, but as the ultimate filter, what sort of vehicle is to be launched or introduced into the market is most important. And that, I think, has changed most uh, compared with uh, Toyota today compared with uh, pre-Lehman crisis. And furthermore, the way in which we perform work should be quite different compared with the time when Toyota was uh, having only 6 million units in sales, and now that Toyota has over 10 million units, because we now have a different corporate constitution, the share, the earnings per share, and uh, overall margin, those are measures used. And those would be formulated as targets and objectives for different functions. And they have their own objectives and targets in this regard. But from my perspective or in my own position, uh, what I need to focus on is to clearly indicate the vision in what sort of company Toyota should become. And those are the measures that I would like to use in leading the company. Take investment in plants, for example, uh, freezing new building of a plant for three years seems to be the statement that has its own life. What I'm trying to say by that phrase is uh, to enhance our competitiveness. And we now have a different basic unit of investment in making 
productivity or making a use of our plants rather than making new capacity investments. And therefore, in making investments, our focus is productivity, higher productivity, or higher competitiveness. Of course, it's very important to produce vehicles where those vehicles are sold, sold, but to produce those vehicles where we can achieve true competitiveness and to be able to supply those products as close as possible to the customers and to make Toyota into such a company is where we stand now. And I think we are now at the starting line to be able to do that. Thank you. My name is Ogawa of Yomiuri newspaper. Well, looking at the financial results, uh, you have sizable profit being generated, and uh, you have uh, talked about this forward-looking initiatives to be implemented. Uh, there have been several examples cited, but with such profitability, where are you going to invest? Uh, so having listened to your answer just now, I still wonder whether you are going to invest for new plants. But what kind of investment are you going to make to grow your company, and what kind of company would you like to be realized? Now, you talked about this landing stage or the current tentative lull in the growth of your company, but uh, from an outsider's point of view, uh, we have this slight concern uh, that perhaps your growth may not be continuous. Now, about this uh, forecast for 2015, the foreign exchange rate difference is a negative 95 billion yen, and uh, can you be more elaborate on this? I believe that our company has grown into a very large company already, and I've been talking about this annual growth, just like this cedar tree, a gigantic cedar tree in the Yakushima Island, every year there's going to be additional growth, just like the trunk of the tree in the vehicle, the product, and the human resource of the company would support and bolster the growth of the company. Therefore, this vehicle, the product, and the human resources uh, shall be the target of investment so that they would steadily develop. And uh, also, the advanced development or the state-of-the-art technology to be invested in would have to target uh, those products that can be harvested and also the products that need to be invested in advance for future growth in various different stages of development. So right now, in this temporary law of this uh, growth in the profitability, maybe people would wonder, do we not want to continuously grow? But if we just keep harvesting, there needs to be uh, some additional sowing of the seeds, if you will, uh, because in the future we need to really uh, harvest uh, the product of growth. Therefore, in the next uh, fiscal year, uh, we are going to, with full determination and decisiveness, have this temporary landing space of our growth, which would more than exceed my expectation in some cases of the growth and development of our human resources and products because one of my mission is to create an environment in which the sustainable growth can be realized eventually. If I may supplement, to be more specific, in the area of R&D, as I have explained earlier, R&D expenses had been increased for environment and safety technologies and also uh, for the advanced state-of-the-art technology and advanced development. 
in the existing assembly lines and in the existing plans, we have already been making investment for the improvement of productivity. In the same model, the same line being assembled, but there has to be a more flexible and nimble assembly process, and that requires investment that we have been making, an investment for human resource development and for the future sustainable growth. One of the important infrastructure would be IT. And uh, already in this fiscal year ended March, uh, we have been increasing our IT investment. So these are the areas in which we would like to make robust investment. Uh, 95 billion yen, uh, which is a negative impact from the exchange rate difference. Looking at the exchange rate of the yen versus the US dollar, it's 100 yen, so it's not that difference. But we produce vehicles abroad, and there is this non yen denominated uh, transaction like producing in the United States, exporting to Canada, producing in Europe, exporting the vehicles to Russia. The these are the emerging countries' currency denominated transaction. And in terms of the foreign exchange rate of the emerging markets, uh, the dollar and the euro at the moment in relative terms are appreciating Brazilian real and other currencies are the basis of transaction like purchasing the parts in uh, other countries and uh, producing in Brazil. And if it was originally denominated in dollar, but if the exchange rate of the Brazilian real is cheaper against the US dollar, there would be a negative impact. So with the relative appreciation of the euro and the US dollar against other emerging market currencies, there would be a negative impact generated. There seems to be some questions from Nagoya, so we would like to be connected to Nagoya and entertain questions from Nagoya. So we would like to give the floor to the audience in Nagoya. My name is Kikuchi of Chubu Economic Journal. Uh, the forecast for the consolidated sales volume reflects uh, this relatively difficult uh, sales situation in the Japanese market. And, uh, are there going to be any changes with your suppliers or the relationship being affected? Uh, and uh, so uh, this is a question to Mr. Toyoda. Uh, what is your outlook? So I'm sorry, I know that you have asked this question to Mr. Toyoda, but allow me to answer your question. So your question had to do with our relationship with our suppliers. As you know, the automotive industry has this large areas of uh, suppliers, uh, various fields of suppliers that are involved in the making of vehicles. And our current situation is the result of this collaborative relationship with our suppliers, which I believe would remain intact. Therefore, domestic production of 3 million units being the target is going to be maintained. And in promoting uh, this uh, TNGO, we need to work with our suppliers uh, to develop together with them. So we need to really maintain this relationship based on trust and further reinforce this bond with our suppliers, which would not be affected by this short-term perspective. Uh, we need to work together with our suppliers and realize sustainable growth together with our suppliers. Mr. Kikuchi, Chubu is uh, the number one site uh, for no, our production. So uh, please be rest assured that uh, the suppliers there would be intact. Any other question, please? NHK no Fujino to Fujino of NHK Broadcasting. Since April, the consumption tax rate was increased. 
And in your forecast, consolidated uh, vehicle sales, you're expecting reduction in sales volume in Japan. Looking back the past month, uh, what is your assessment of the situation in Japan? And uh, for the entire year, you're expecting some reduction in the Japanese market. But when do you expect the recovery to start? What is your sense, Mr. Toyoda? That's the first question. And in terms of the future, you ex use the, uh, the expression half landing of the stair cars. But looking at the world economy overall, what are some of the risk factors that could further cause difficulty for the market to continue growing further? So do you see any risk factors inherent in the global economy that could impede the continued expansion of the market? Allow me to answer that question. In terms of the impact of consumption tax rate increase, Last year, since maybe autumn last year, there has been some last-minute purchase or demand uh, for vehicles before the tax hike. And as you pointed out, there has been decline in sales in April. So in that sense, uh, there has been last-minute purchase, and there is a reaction to that in the form of uh, decline in vehicle sales uh, in April. But what was the magnitude of the impact is very difficult to be assessed on the quantitative manner. So what is going to happen uh, around what time uh, is not clear. Of course, we'll continue to make marketing sales efforts, uh, if anything, reinforce those efforts so that uh, we'll be able to achieve recovery in sales as quickly as possible. But at this juncture, it's difficult for me to share with you any concrete uh, forecast or outlook. In terms of some of the risk factors inherent in the world economy, generally speaking, the U.S. economy is expected to uh, remain quite strong. And uh, even in Europe, the financial problem seems to be settling down. and. Europe is expected to move toward a more stable growth, or at least we are hoping for that to happen. So given that, some of the risk factors may relate to emerging markets uh, that may relate to tapering of the United States. And stemming from that, there may be some impact felt on the financial sector and uh, increase in inflation or decline in the value of currencies. So those are some of the risk factors. The specific risk factor may vary from country to country, but generally speaking, those are some of the risk factors I see in the world economy. And furthermore, this year, some of the emerging countries are going to have general election this year. And after the election, uh, what the new government is going to take uh, in the policy area requires continued monitoring and careful attention. Allow me to add some words relating to the risk factors. Of course, risk factors are numerous, and there are different types of risks. Some risks uh, could be under our control, but there are other risks beyond our control. So as far as those risks that are under our control are concerned, compared with four years ago, uh, we now are in a position uh, to be able to take corporate taxes, but that could result in some um, attitude on our part that may be characterized as a hubris or complacency. So that, I think, is the biggest risk that I see. So we need to be humble and modest, and we need to be always grateful of those people who supported us, and we need to be open-minded to listen to other people's opinions. So those are some of the areas that are under our control. These are risks that we can avoid ourselves. So we should never forget being thankful to other people's support, and we should be always humble. In a straightforward manner. Since the time is limited, I would like to entertain only the questions from two other people. Uh, one question per person, please. 
Thank you very much. My name is Yamada from Toyo Keizai. So you talk about this uh, half decades or the temporary law of the growth, but after that you are aiming for sustainable growth. So when we think about this growth into the future, I think you have only the option of increasing the top line growth or uh, to really improve the profit margin. So you talk about making a first step from this new start, but is after achieving this maximum profit of the sales of 10 million units, uh, would there be any qualitative change or growth? So. I try not to make the specific statement about uh, this numerical target of our net sales because uh, the profit is really the result of the growth that we managed to achieve. As president, if I talk about profit as an engine of growth, what happens is that the cause and the result would be confused. 330,000 people work for Toyota on a global basis, and there are numerous suppliers that bolster our growth, and there are dealers that really work hard together with us. And we have this team spirit that allowed us to realize this sustainable growth. So that is the company that I represent, and for all the stakeholders by showing this numeric target that may end up in really negatively impacting uh, the stakeholder value. So if we talk about this temporary a uh, lot of the growth, that does not mean that uh, the growth would stop because we keep on talking about the sustainable growth. 10 years from now or five years from now, everybody and all the stakeholders, I hope, would appreciate our effort uh, that they were glad that they supported the growth of Toyota. So we want to change uh, the profit structure of Toyota. And uh, so profit would only be the result of the growth of the company. Rather, we would like to focus our attention on the development of human resources and the managerial resources to be allocated should be carefully considered. And I hope all the stakeholders would understand this. So sustainable growth for the coming five to 10 years is something that you are confident in? Yes, I believe so. With this confidence, I am able to be seated here. But of course, this confidence does not just come from my individual effort. All the suppliers and the dealers and 330,000 employees working for Toyota throughout the globe have worked together. And uh, we focus the Gemba where there is activity. And as long as our spirit is maintained, I am confident that we would get uh, the results. My question is somewhat related to the previous question. My question is related to IT investment. The Google is now talking about the autonomous cars, and also the Intel is now trying to network those vehicles. Those vehicles are getting bottomless. In the case of car makers, for car makers to remain car maker, for those RT, IT companies or manufacturers who are strong in uh, companies, how do you intend to compete against them? Probably the ultimate objective, be it the IT manufacturer or car maker, would be the same of coming up with an automated or autonomous vehicle. But in the case of car making, the objective of autonomous uh, driving is to reduce traffic accident casualties down to zero as much as possible. This is not unique to Toyota, but for all the car makers, 
the unmanned driving is not the ultimate objective, but using the technology that enables that, reducing traffic accident down to zero is the ultimate objective. And that, I think, is the most greatest difference between car maker and IT-focused companies. And there is one other uh, difference. The cars could be called beloved cars. In the case of uh, vehicles produced by car maker, car could be referred to affectionately as beloved cars. But in the case of our cars produced by IT-focused companies, it will be I cars with alphabet I in front of it. Now, why is a car called affectionately beloved car? With encountering with vehicles, one's driver's life could be changed. And in a certain sense, the cars make drivers happy. And as an emotional being, uh, vehicles are used as an emotional vehicle. It's not just a moving vehicle uh, or commodity moving people from point A to point B. If it is reduced to a commodity, it's different. But cars are the only industrial products or manufactured goods that is affectionately referred to as beloved cars. Once we lose that position, we'll relegate our position as an important car maker. So we would like to continue focusing on that beloved aspect or emotional aspect of vehicles going forward as well. Thank you very much. Since the time has come, I would like to conclude this meeting with this. Thank you.